Okay, we are good. All right, do you want to start? Ready to go. All right. Uh, we'll call the Tuesday, August 18th, 2020 meeting of the Weathersfield Planning and Zoning Commission to order. Um, Brian, would you please read the roll call? Absolutely. Uh, Commissioner Roberts? Here. I am here. Commissioner Hughes? Yes. Commissioner Oikel? Here. Commissioner Hammer? Here. Commissioner Dean? Here. Commissioner Edwards? Here. Commissioner Vieira? Commissioner Drake? Here. here. Commissioner Antoniak? So, and Commissioner Homicki? Here. All right. So that's nine, including the alternates, so that at least for now, everybody will be participating. Um, before we get into the business, I just want to pick up a point of personal privilege uh, and recognize the, the passing of our fellow commissioner, Dan Silver. Uh, Dan served on the commission for quite a number of years, uh, added tremendous value, had good questions, had good insights, um, and I enjoyed sitting next to him. So, uh, you know, I'd ask that we keep him and his family in our thoughts and prayers. Um, next item, 2.1, annual organizational meeting. Uh, given what we have for an agenda and the members of the public uh, I'd entertain a motion to move that to uh, after 4.1 on the agenda. No move. All right. Second. Moved, second. Moved by Tony, second by George. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Item 2.2, .2, uh, picking up the public hearing. Application 2044-20Z, Justin Roy, seeking a special permit in accordance with section 5.2.I. Other uses similar to permitted uses of the Weathersfield zoning regulations for a temporary construction staging area at 207 Church Street. And this hearing began on July 21st and we've continued it to today. Um, we were supposed to have had a meeting in the interim, but that was the night of the, the last storm. Um, so we're kind of picking up where we left off. I know most of you were present for the last meeting. Uh, anyone else who, uh, when we get down to discussing who's going to uh, participate in the deliberations, we can figure out who's familiarized themselves with the, you know, the record from that hearing. To the extent that you you need to hear anything new uh, in addition to what is discussed tonight. Uh, so I guess with that, I would ask the applicant if you'd like to, uh, you know, basically make a present, a brief recap of the presentation and any kind of update from uh, where we were on July 21st. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Which, yes. Um, uh, point of uh, uh, privilege, I, um, I'm in a, perhaps an overabundance of caution. Um, I deem it uh, potentially inappropriate for me to continue participation in uh, this uh, application 2044-20-Z and I hereby abstain from further participation in this matter uh, and request the chair appoint an alternate in my stead for okay. this applicable for this application only. All right, thank and you. Yeah, we don't, Rich, we don't, we don't have any other alternates. I'm sorry, Joe. Sorry, as I had indicated to, to Peter, um, I am also not going to participate uh, in this application as well. Okay, thank you. Uh, so that takes us down to seven members who will be uh, hearing the application and if we close the hearing tonight deliberating and voting and again um, according to our bylaws it requires five affirmative votes for a, for a motion to carry. So again I'd invite uh, the applicant to sort of recap what it is they're proposing, uh, talk about any changes in the proposal and any updated information since 
July 21st that they wish to share. And Justin looks like he's muted. Okay. All right, thanks everyone for coming together, meeting again. I know we were supposed to meet two weeks ago, but unfortunately the weather wouldn't allow that. Um, so we are interested in utilizing the back of 207, 214 for temporary construction staging for the water main improvements project that's taking place on Church Street and Knott Street. Uh, the duration of use would be approximately from August now through June of next year. Uh, the area is the area behind the building, um, west of the railroad tracks. The work hours of construction are daytime between eight hours, between the hours of 7 a.m. and 5 p.m which we have started working out there. And the hours that we are currently working are four, uh, I'm sorry, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, there's a minor amount of night work that needs to get taken place uh, on Silas Dean intersection. The hours of night work are between 8 p.m. and 5 a.m. Uh, types of storage that we're gonna be looking to use in the property would be water main, pipe materials, fittings, uh, construction vehicles, excavators, loaders, uh, typical things that are required to perform the work. Um, the frequency of traffic uh, would be limited to the hours of the, of the shift during the construction. So the vehicles would be coming and going out of the property to get construction materials to bring them to the street uh, and at the end of the day, we would take the vehicles and park them in the area. Uh, during the last meeting, there was uh, some concern about the noise and the night work and possibly utilizing other sites. Uh, since the last meeting, we've, uh, I approached the state to see what they would allow if they would change the work. Um, They've, they've allowed test pits to be performed during the day instead of night, which we've since began doing that. We've started working out there this week during the day. Um, the actual water main work will still need to be completed at night, but we anticipate, like I mentioned last time, that each site is going to take uh, one week or less. So I'm thinking two weeks of night work. Um, there was questions asked about alternate staging areas. Um, we've approached the Weathersfield Construction Company on Wells Street to see if they have space or if they're willing to lease a section of their yard to us. Um, I was told that they do not own, uh, they're, they're not the owners of the land and, and they are not, uh, they're not able to accommodate. And if, if they were, they, they said they're really maxed out with capacity. So that was not an option. Um, another area that was mentioned was the Price Right parking lot. Um, I reached out to the Colvis group. I spoke with the front office desk. Uh, I was told I'd uh, probably get a call back from somebody, but I did not receive uh, any information on that property. Um, and, a, and a third spot, that talking to the town of Weathersfield, uh, they have a location on Marsh, I believe Marsh Street at the end of church. Um, we went down and, and looked at that location and we are able to utilize a small section of that spot, but it's not gonna be big enough for the full, the construction that's needed. So we're gonna supplement this yard that we're using with this other area to minimize the impact. Um, and as far as the site plan, uh, the town of Weathersfield reviewed our site plan and made some recommendations about uh, er erosion controls and silt fence, which which we have no objection to installing to meet the to meet the requirements. I was not entirely clear on on what you were conclusion was when you were talking about the town um, 
town garage down on Marsh Street. You said it wasn't big enough, but then you said something about taking advantage of it to reduce the scope, but I'm not sure whether that meant you were thinking about doing that or whether it just didn't work or what. Uh, yep, so we plan to use as, as much area as we can at the Marsh Street um, without disrupting the town's activities. I believe they made two bins or areas, we call them, that, that we, we can use for storing some of the aggregate material, the sand and the stone. At the end of the day, we can uh, dump it there to minimize the impact at the 207 property. Um, I'd like to say something, George. Um, what, Peter, I really want to address this to you. Why can't the locations not be along the railroad side or as close to the railroad as they are? They can't be moved out to the 100 foot line or into it? Uh, I mean, that's a flat site. I mean, is that so sacred, even though there's construction on it, including part of the building, that it can't be moved out into the middle of the site to get it further away from those homes? I, George, I think to answer your question, there is some flexibility to pull that material away. There is a 100 year flood zone uh, along the brook. Um, the Wetlands Commission made the determination that any storage within there required a permit from them. It wasn't a uh, no, but it was that it needed to go through their process and it was determined uh, that they didn't want to go through that process. There is some area out towards the street. Uh, in the front of the property where some of the material is being stored now, uh, that outside of the 100-year flood zone, which would be okay. So there's potentially uh, some flexibility uh, to do that, uh, as well as pull some of the material away from the railroad tracks to a certain extent. I don't know that that's going to be a significant. So you're, say, you're saying, Peter, that the it's too involved to ask the inland wetlands to consider some use of that below that 100 foot line? No, I don't think it's too involved. It's just that a decision was made by whoever that they didn't want to pursue that permit. It uh, doesn't mean they couldn't still pursue that. Um, I mean, the applicant did not want to. I'll let Justin answer that question. I wasn't part of those conversations. Um, oh. It came to me after that, after that determination was made. Because Peter, to be very honest, I, I go down there and I've looked at it and in the past, I even talked to, I didn't uh, ask to talk to them, but I talked to a couple of the neighbors, they've testified to us. And um, I don't see it so bad right now with the growth down there of the vegetation this summer. And actually there are a lot of pine trees and uh, I looked at it very carefully. In fact, I even went down there today to take a second look at it. And uh, it's not that bad. Uh, um, but it's just, I was saying if we could move out instead of right along the railroad track, uh, even, even 100 feet, uh, you know, 50 or 100 feet, it would be that much further away from those people and make them happier. And uh, I think I would feel a lot better. In fact, I was thinking at one point of voting against this application for that reason. And uh, I, uh, because I, I think we have to treat neighborhoods like Old Weathersfield uh, in a sincere manner. And they have been, uh, they had the dog issue uh, down the way a bit last year. And uh, I don't blame them for being very concerned and speaking out on this. And so I was trying to make this a more appropriate site location. And uh, I thought moving it smack on top of a 100 foot line or just, you know, part of it below it would not be a problem. And I was saying that, gee, if a flood ever does come along that's serious, uh, the kind of materials they have can be moved very quickly. So it's not a crisis in that sense. But you're saying it would be too involved and the applicant did not want to do that. Now, no, my other question of the applicant, have you pursued other sites like the bank site up at the top of the hill 
at the, you know, the old bank site at the corner. Would that be a good site? It's right, right next to your work, right? Really. George, it might be a good site, but not subject to this application. I mean, I they don't okay. have the permission. Well, I'm trying to explore everything yes. here while I'm at it. And we, we did that too. That's why um, we pulled the town garage into the picture to try and accommodate that. So we've been we've been trying to do that behind the scenes as well. Because the applicant kept saying, hey, this site is close to us. It's very close and it really is. But they, I see one up there that's even closer. I mean, other than the town hall site, which you guys don't want to lose your parking up there. I realize. Uh, those, are, those are some of my questions, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Anybody else on the commission have questions for the applicant? It, it, let me just ask one question. I, I kind of read all the background information. Uh, Peter, this is David Drake. What, what was the applicant's plan when he bid this thing? What was it going to do? I'll let the applicant speak to that, Dave. Uh, honestly, we, we planned on utilizing this yard. Um, we started this process back in June. Uh, we had the first meeting in July. Uh, like I said, the, the construction, we're under the gun to start construction and we already started this week. Um, obviously with the delay in the weather last week, that didn't help, but um, uh, you know, I hear all these other options about other, other yards um, at this point. I don't think we have enough time to go through the process again, of submitting the application, getting the meeting on the schedule and performing this. No, I'm not, but I'm not saying when you started, I, I'm saying when you bid this thing way back as a project, what was your when plan? We bid, when we bid this job, uh, we noticed this yard on the job and we knew that previous contractors have used this yard for construction. Um, so we assumed that we could use this yard Okay. And just to clarify, we're we're still assuming that the original yard is the preferable option and that's what we're going forward with. Yes, yes. Um I, also worth noting that when the original application was submitted, um we were planning to utilize staging a lot more of aggregate to build the job, the gravel, the stone and the sand. We sense um, decided to have a central yard in Hartford where we are going to stockpile um, majority of our materials, of our earth materials, which is going to greatly reduce the amount of truck traffic in and out of this property. Um, I think it's going to make a very big impact to the original proposal when we were planning on hauling directly to the site and using that area as the stockpile location. So if we can put a finer point on that, you're taking all of the, all of the earthwork quantity, all of the, the aggregate, whatever you need for subbase and all that kind of stuff. You're taking that, that none of that is going to be on the, in the laydown area um, that we're talking about now. That's going to be in Hartford. So all of the loading, unloading, beeping, all that kind of stuff that happens with trucks when you're trying to trying to load up a dump or whatever. That's that's all going to happen in Hartford, and not in Weathersfield. Is that what I just heard? Yeah, and I think a combination between the Hartford location and the town uh, area at, um, at Marsh Street, we should be able to accomplish that. So the only thing that you're going to be storing in Weathersfield on that site is going to be like your pipe and like any any incidentals for the connections and all that kind of stuff, like the actual hardware, not necessarily any of the uh, stockpile? Yes, exactly. We, we would like to store a, a storage container where we can lock up uh, valuables and smaller items, and then we'll put all the uh, pipe fittings, park the equipment, um, trench boxes for the protection uh, for digging the steel plates, anything that uh, can get stored there it'd be an ideal to store it and get it out of there right away. Thank you. Hey, hey this is David Drake again. J just to clarify what you just said, on this property now, there wouldn't be any aggregate. It would just be piping and, you know, containers and material to do actually do the work. 
Yeah, that sounds uh, – I, I agree with that statement. I think that seems to be where this is going, and we'd be willing to make that modification if that's going to help the situation. Absolutely. Peter, I have two more small questions of you. Okay. Uh, Fire away. Uh, temporary shield uh, near the railroad tracks. Any way that you thought of doing anything along that line and it's just nothing that makes any kind of sense, right? You said temporary shield? Yeah. yeah. Like, what, are you, what are you talking about, like a noise barrier? From the vehicle lights or what are you trying to protect? Well, I don't know. I'm, I'm not even sure what I'm talking about, to tell you the truth. Um, I thought there might be something that was con could be considered. But considering what we went through over at the dog situation, I doubt very much. And I don't mean anything that sturdy or strong, but just something additional that would be uh, help with the sound issues and the light issues, if any. I don't think a temporary would help with any sound issues, but it might help with the uh, headlights as the vehicles turn in the parking lot uh, in the either early morning or late in the evening. They, there are products out there that are, um, you know, lightweight, but also solid that could be, you know, like a fabric, fabric uh, fence, as long as it's up to a certain height, might do the trick if that's the concern. That's what I was thinking. In addition to the uh, pine trees and the growth down there is pretty good right now. And uh, I noticed today. And uh, so something like that would really, would really help the neighbors, I think. Okay, I made that note. The other thing is, Peter, is a question. You had the second one was, this is a little off the site, sort of. It's the railroad ties along the railroad there toward the entrance. What, what the heck? Who's are those? The railroads? The railroads. And why are they there? They've been working in the right of way, um, removing ties and cleaning. Uh, well, I, regrading the track, I guess is the best way of putting it over the last few weeks, uh, right. which has created some other issues. But uh, nevertheless, uh, those ties are a byproduct of that effort. Uh, I don't know when they're planning on removing those, but the ties are stored on state. That state property right there. It's not this. It's not on this property. That's subject of the application. Just so you know. No, I, the reason I pass that on too is because our zoning enforcement officer officer is being called on by the town and yourself and others to uh, correct uh, things on that site, and uh, this is part of it. So. No, it's Thank not. You. George, just so you know, it's not part of this site, and we don't oh, it have, isn't. It's on the railroad it's on property. The railroad property, correct. And we have oh, okay. we have uh, little to nothing to say about the railroad, as you will recall. Um, recently, when the railroad started back up again, we had other issues we wanted to address, and we were advised that uh, our authority is uh, is uh, slim to none in terms of the railroad. That's for sure. Uh, sorry, the railroad and their authority. Next up, King of England. Hey, as to follow up on one of one of George's comments, questions, um, was there any thought given to to filing the application to be able to store the stuff within the hundred year floodplain, just to kind of reduce the impact on uh, the neighbors? And secondarily, you know, n now that you've kind of offloaded some of the, you know, material transactions. Um, you know, what what are your estimated volume of truck traffic during the ordinary day um, expectations for this property? I know that you had talked about, uh, a month ago, you had talked about how many trips were likely to be required. Has that changed substantially as a result of uh, moving some of the material to Hartford or, or over to Marsh Street? Yeah, I think uh, it would reduce the truck traffic than what we were originally thinking, uh, just for the main reason that the trucks don't need to go to the yard to get the material. Um, as far as the material that's been delivered, uh, that's a 
a portion of the material. Uh, obviously, there's still more pipe that needs to get delivered to the yard. And, uh, but when that comes in, it's, you know, one truck load unloaded and then the truck's gone. So it's not significant in and out traffic. Okay. Any of the other members of the commission have any questions for the applicant? not uh, open it up to the public. Uh, keep in mind that um, this is a public hearing. You can uh, make comments, you can ask questions of the applicant, you can ask questions of the commission, but you know we're going to try to keep it somewhat orderly. You know everybody has the opportunity to, to make their statements and so forth. Um, we're not looking to get into sustained back and forth with, you know, with members of the public, um, you know, we definitely want to hear everything that anyone has to say um, and we'll take it into consideration. And if there are either clarifications or additional information that um, needs to come from either the town or the applicant as a result of what the, the members of the public say, uh, we'll do that while the hearing is still open so that everyone will have the opportunity to, you know, to, to hear whatever answers are provided. Um, I don't know, Peter, do you have the ability to kind of control or do we just sort of... Yes, I can. I, I'm just going to go in order here. Um, okay. By the last four digits of the phone number. So I'll just call them out and we'll try and keep it uh, to some order. And then if necessary, we can go back uh, in order again. So the first, the first name I see there, and it may not be here for this application, but Ian Primo. Oh, I'm a superintendent with Baltazar, so I'm just here to help answer questions. I just tagged on with Justin to help out. Okay, thanks. Uh, Sue Tenorio. I'm gonna and, I, and I guess while we're doing that, if anybody is not speaking, could you please mute yourself because there's some kind of random noises in addition to cute dogs. Excuse me, I'm here. Okay. All right. Just give um, us I your name and address, please. Pardon me? Just your name and address, please. Yes, my name is Dr. Sue Tenorio. I live at 28 Lincoln Road. Actually, I'm like a block, half a block away from the um, staging, proposed staging area. And I would like to say, first of all, that I appreciate the thoughtful discussion that's going on at this point because it gives me heart to know that you are thinking very much about the nearby residents and our concerns about this, not the construction itself, but the use of the auction house property as a staging area. I am one of many individuals, and I'm sure that others may want to speak up as well, but my concerns are pretty common among the individuals who are objecting to the use of the auction house property as a staging area. First of all, there wasn't any public information about this. Um, maybe there was to the immediate residents on uh, Church Street and not, but I live on Lincoln Road just around the corner, a half a block, and I got no information on this. I got a flyer in my mailbox from a concerned citizen, and I happen to agree and support whoever that was or the group that was being represented because I thought, when did this all happen and why don't we know about it? Because if the information went out to the residents on Knott and Church Street, that wasn't good enough. We have people who work in and out of Old Weathersfield on a daily basis. Okay, they, many of them are doing virtual um, distancing at this point, but there's still a lot of traffic of people who come to Old Weathersfield simply because they like it. They think it's a beautiful area. 
I can't tell you how many times when people have asked me where I live and I say Old Weathersfield, they say, oh, I love Old Weathersfield. We have many special events that bring people into town. I mean, it's 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 a well-known destination site. And now we have another problem that is being displaced upon Old Weathersfield. Um, one of the other concerns is public safety. Many of our students are our senior high as well as our middle school students walk, believe it or not, to and from school. And they're going to start back on September 1st. It was bad enough that they have to be mindful of the trains that have all been agreed to and authorized and originally were supposed to be at almost prescribed times but they, they're coming at all times of the day and in the night as well. And, and you know, now we're asking these kids to be mindful of train traffic and then these construction, huge con- construction vehicles coming in and out of the same area. Another concern is one of public health. This is an old town, and the the area in which is being where the construction is being focused has some deep seated concerns in terms of hazardous materials, um, what's being dug up, how is it being transported, how is it even f- flying in the air? You know, it, it's like it's a bio. Um, it's a it's a contaminant that that exists in these these um, materials that are being dug up and transported around the area, and that's like a biohazard risk situation. But most significantly, the site, the auction house property, is zoned as a town center site. It's not a construction site nor a dumping ground, nor a staging area. Balthazar and MDC need to look at other, more appropriate places than using the auction house property. The gentleman who spoke from Balthazar a few minutes ago, who said he placed a call to cost, right, or price, right, excuse me, and he hasn't heard back, well, excuse me, you call again. You don't wait for a call. If you're serious about being in touch, you give another call until you get a hold of someone. That would be a perfect site. It's open. It's it's a huge space. It's fairly adjacent to the targeted area. So I urge you to get going on calling back and getting in touch with them. And as far as the garage space is concerned, you know, I think it may not be to your convenience, to your perfect site, but I think it's a much better site than trying to use the auction house property. Thank you for your consideration of our concerns. Thank you very much. Um, okay, um, I'm going to uh, ask uh, phone number, last four digits is 5279. If you would unmute yourself and please speak. Can you hear me? Yes. (laughs) Uh, I have a preliminary question. Uh, Um, Maybe Peter can answer it. Okay. Yeah, just the name Um, and the address. Oh, I'm sorry. My name is Brian Thompson. I live at 35 Deerfield. Thank you. Um, The question, one of the questions I have is that, is there a history? Any history of variance on this site for this purpose before? Because it doesn't seem to me that there has been a use like this before. Rick, 
Rich, do you, do you want me to answer that or? Yeah, I mean, all, all I can say is I'm not aware of any in whatever time I've been paying attention to things. That's correct. Okay, another thing, I just want to nail down, Rush, uh, nail down, Justin, you're saying now you're not going to store the dirt behind the auction house in the parking lot, but you will be storing pipes and stuff. Do you see yourself taking up that whole area still, or is the area in front of the auction house where you're at right now without the variance big enough? Uh, we would like to use the area in the back to remove everything from the uh, right away, just for safety concerns. We feel it's safer to have everything in the back uh, away from the edge of the road. But is that just what you, is it the amount that you have out there right now would be in the back or are you saying the piles would still be there? No, I think uh, uh, can I, can I take that? Sure, go ahead. Yeah, Ian. just identify yourself. Yeah, yeah so this is uh, Ian Primo. I'm actually the site superintendent on the job. And uh, essentially, essentially what you see right now in the front of the building could be moved to the rear of the building and put towards the loading dock side, um, just so you wouldn't have the eyesore as you're driving down Church Street. Um, Materials-wise, uh, if allowed, we could string out pipe on Church Street as well, which would minimize the footprint taken up either in front or behind uh, the auction house. If, uh, if that's not allowed, then pipe would be stored behind the auction house. Um, truck traffic really would be would be minimal, uh, seeing as though we're not storing any, uh, I guess, erodible materials um, on this at, at this site or on this job. So really, um, anything with you know the hundred year flood storm, uh, you know, essentially with a hundred year flood storm, you're going to have at least a two or three day heads up before an event like that. And you know, all materials would be secured and, and moved out of the site. So, uh, and from what I understand with NBC, uh, Mizzy, uh, a prior contractor, did use the back of the auction house and they did store materials and depot materials in the back of that yard. And that was a, not a hundred years ago, but that's what I've been told. Okay, so. You're saying you would not have the plan as it is in the current packet. Does the plan need an addendment, or do the plan need to be resubmitted? Peter. So I think that's up to the commission. Uh, uh, they could approve it subject to a, a host of conditions. And uh, after those conditions are attached, uh, that could include the submission of a revised plan, but that's completely up to the commission's decision. Should we be um, okay, should we be you. collecting all these questions and answering them all at once, or I, f I feel like that might be better, just so that we can we can go through, hear everybody's concerns, address those concerns, and then if there's any follow up, we can do that all at once. Does that make Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean that. That works. I just didn't know how many more questions the the current speaker was going to have. Yeah, nope, I know. That's like, that's let, let, let's collect all of them and then. Yeah. I understand. Uh, that's all. That's all I have, really. I just wanted to nail down whether or not it would require a change or amendment. And if you guys can do that, that would be great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, the next speaker uh, phone number ends in uh, with uh, 1984. Yep. Hi, good evening. How are you? Good. Just uh, name and address, please. Hi. Uh, Jim Hockdorf from at 34 Dorchester Road. Thank you. Um, I would just like uh, the company to try to find a 
alternate location opposed to the back of the auction house as uh, kind of close to a residential area. As, as was mentioned, they're trying to keep it an eye sore from Church Street, but it still would be an hour eye line from Dorchester, Deerfield, and Lincoln. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, the thank next, you. Thank you. The next speaker, uh, phone number ends in uh, number 1717. Uh, calling number 1717. Here we go. Hi, this is Karen Cutts, 15 Deerfield Road. Can you hear me? Yes. Great, thank you. Um, <clears throat> so I, I, just a few points. Uh, the last time I was on this call, I, I was talking about the application that was submitted for the special permit um, in, in order for this to, to be uh, everything to be stored. And I referred to Article 8, which basically this permit is being requested under other uses and it really doesn't fit the article. Um, and I also talked about Article 5 and that refers to this place, uh, the, the auction house being a town centered property and it doesn't allow construction. So um, I, I would argue again that, that according to these town articles that, that this application for this special permit does not meet um, those articles. Um, and in fact, if um, the owner of the auction house is the only one benefiting from uh, uh, the use of this property, I believe that's called spot zoning and it's illegal in Connecticut. So I, I guess I would like a response to, um, or any information about uh, uh, that. Um, and then I, two other questions I had, there's in regards to the time frames. the last time, Justin, you said, and I'm looking at some of the paperwork that was submitted that the time frame originally was like around 10 months or so from August to June. And I guess I'm confused because I thought I heard you say today that it would take about two weeks for um, the, the Garden Street and, and or two weeks for the Knott Street. So I'm asking for clarification around that time frame again. And then again, uh, um, according to when, uh, someone asked it on the on the committee about the dump trucks and the expected traffic. The last time, Justin, you said it was about six round trips a day, um, and if that is um, reduced because gravel and dirt is not going to be around, and and things have already been distributed actually up and down Knott Street on the sides of the road, um, what? from six round trips a day, like what does that go down to? Um, again, I remain concerned. I, I am in a household directly behind the auction house. Um, the lights are gonna be an issue. The noise are gonna be an issue. We're all trying to work from home. Um, and uh, I understand that, that this work that uh, these water main pipes need to get done. Um, and but I, I think there should be an alternative site, and I think people should not have assumed that um, property we used for construction before it should have been checked into. It should have been part of the plan not to target a town-centered property um, and have to even seek a special permit to um, get the storage of everything on this site. So, uh, again, I do appreciate everyone's time and thoughtfulness about considering us as neighbors in our neighborhood. We are in a historical district on this side of the fence as well. We have the historical society where we have to follow what windows we put in, what doors we put in, how we paint our front doors and what we build and, and how close it is to things. And here we are um, right behind us and, and we can't even follow the, own, uh, the, the town's own articles of, again, I'm referring to five and eight. So. Um, thank you for your time, and I hope that those questions can be answered. Okay. Thank you very much. I guess, to, can I answer that uh, question about the two weeks? Sure. Uh, the two weeks was just the reference to the night work. So the night work is estimated to take two weeks or less, not the entire project. The project uh, is, is going to go from August to June of next year, 10 months. 
for the entire project. Okay. Justin, just to follow up to that question, um, when you do have those two weeks of night work, would there be uh, daytime work going on during those two weeks at the same time? Uh, thanks, Peter. No, the night work will take place separately. Uh, so basically, we will not have double shifts going on at the same time. We will not be working around the clock, day work and night work. When the crew switches to night work, there'll be no activity during the day. And then when they're done with the night work, they'll switch back to the, to the day shift. Okay. Thank you. Okay. We're down to five four nine six. Yeah, it looks like yeah uh, five four nine six. If you're out there, um, unmute. Phone number ending in five four nine six. All right, well, we'll come back to that one. All right, the next number is, uh, ends in 0354. Oh. Okay. Good evening. Hi, this is Lori Tuline, 83 Hartford Ave. Thank you. Um, I wanna echo Karen Cutt. Um I am agreeing with her concerns. Um, I'm calling in because I really do believe that there needs to be another site for this project. Um, it does create um, a lot of disruption to this neighborhood and it's entirely an inappropriate um, place for the staging. I really, I, I also appreciate the discussion going on tonight and I realize you know, that, that this could be approved with exceptions. So far I haven't heard any that make me change my mind. Um, and I just urge you to, to please not pass this and, and ask the applicants to find a better, um, more suited and already zoned property. And that's it. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank yeah. you. All righty. Good night. Thank you. Uh, the, next, the next number is, let's see here. Did we get um, 5279 already? If you're out there? I think so. I think we got that one already? Okay. Yes. Um, so if we, five, four, nine, six, so uh, zero, four, two, two. Zero, four, two, two. Phone number ends in zero, four, two, two. Okay, I'm gonna ask you one more time to unmute. Okay, uh, let's move on to, looks like the last caller uh, ends in- four, Hello, hello, can you hear me? 5279, is that you? It's 5496, for some reason I'm not being unmuted. Okay. Yeah. Um, you called me earlier. Yep. It's Michelle Furman from 35 Deerfield Road. Yeah, thank you. Um, we've been on, I was on the last call also. I think we're on a slippery slope when we start using town centers and historical sites as construction zones. As Karen made the point, this is not zoned for this area. A special variance would benefit the community around the area. It would only benefit the owner of the auction house and his five finances. So many of us haven't even talked about the, how it would be affecting our, our homeowners. Oops. I'm echoing, I'm sorry. So, you know, with everything that's going to go on behind us, we're going to be talking about noise and debris, and, and yes, we may have a special variance, but we haven't even decided if that's going to be to the point yet. But we're talking about environment you know environmentally dumping dirt debris 18 hours a day of people moving back and forth behind our house fall will be here shortly 
the leaves will be down. We'll be have a clear sight view to this site. The sound will pick up with fall coming. There will be, we'll be able to see it. Um, we have students that are now going to be homeschooling three days a week minimum, five days for some. We have parents that are working from home to, and taking care of their children while schooling them. The amount of stress and the impact that this will put on our daily lives is unbearable. Sue had mentioned earlier about the school children walking by. Justin originally had said two weeks ago that the moving of the equipment will start early in the morning at the same time as our students walking up and down the school. We have people with disabilities on Deerfield Road, people that are sound sensitive. They will be in their house for the next nine months, 10 months, because they are not going to be able to go outside with the, so the noise and the anxiety that's going to affect them. Our real estate values will go down due to uh, construction on loading docks, which was never, ever behind there. I've been a resident for this town for many years, and many people on this call have been. There has been other staging areas called, and COVIS has responded to Justin. And I guess there'll be someone else talking more about that in a few minutes. There's no benefit to our neighborhood by this construction staging area behind it. I hope when you, we vote tonight, we vote that if you lived in our backyards, what we, you would have to go through, what your children would have to go through playing in those backyards, learning in schools with noises of trucks and dumping and debris behind their houses. So I hope you take this in consideration. This is not an area, and if there's any idling behind our house, we'll have to start reporting it. That will bring in the Department of Environmental Services also. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, I think the last phone number is, uh, ends in 4434. Hello, my name is Sharon Cutts, 15 Deerfield Road. Thank you. And I'm also a clinical social worker in town with the private practices, so that makes me also a business owner. Um, and I'm pretty worked up about this. So forgive me for the uh, shaking in my voice. And I'm really angry because there's a lot of things here that don't make sense to me. And it, it keeps coming back to what is ethical about how this whole operation has come down. And, and Justin, you seem like an eager young man, but I've supervised a lot of people. And... There was an expression of poor planning on your part does not create an emergency on our part, and that takes, that takes us the wrong way. So I went to the ethics chapter, uh, section of our town charter, and there were two that popped out at me, and one is special treatment. So I realized that many of you on planning and zoning are lawyers, and so forgive me for you know doing sort of ethics for dummies here, but special treatment, no governed person, which is all elected and appointed officials, shall grant favor or advantage beyond that which is generally available to all residents. So John Zabretsky, the owner of the auction house, has a rundown property for which he's attempted a multi-story mixed-use building a few years ago. Last summer, we contended with his allowing truckers to overnight and work on their rig, so it turned our backyard into a truck stop. And the only thing that stopped that was us calling the police and taking decibel readings. So we had to become sound engineers. And then now... You want to turn it into a truck stop again because all these rigs are going to get parked in our yard, our backyard. All that beeping, all that noise, and it's not what we moved to Old Weatherfield for. But Balthazar seems to think that this property is the one and only property in the entire town that's best fit despite zoning violations and significant neighborhood objections. The second is conflict of interest. That popped out at me. Close ties of Mr. Zabreski exist on the Economic Development Council and the Town Council. If I'm wrong, please correct me. But during the July 21st meeting, Mr. Tom Pensola was proudly wearing his um, Zabreski real estate agent shirt. So that occurred to me, well, what is his tie? And he, it turns out he's a real estate agent 
for the owner of this auction house. Not only is he an agent, his wife is. And then there's Pat Pensilo, who I may be his son, but it's another same last name. He's a town council member and new candidate for state representative who has both parents employed by the owner of the auction house. So what else would explain why the town keeps looking the other way with regard to not keeping up this property and allowing multiple attempted zoning violations? As Karen said, we do live in an old weather field, so we're familiar with the application process. And it's well known that any applicant, commercial or tax-paying resident, ha has someone, it's recommended that they review their application with them prior to even submitting it. So who's telling Mr. Zabreski that these applications even have merit? And why are we turning a blind eye to a contractor who says in writing in his July 31st letter to our town planner, Mr. Gillespie, and he told us all here tonight that he called Colvis and left a message and no one returned his call. He, he said that in his introduction tonight. It sounded suspicious to me like some of the people I've supervised in the past that just wanted to get by. So four days ago, that very leasing agent from Colvin told me, because I called that big sign up there saying, please lease our stuff, done by price right. Frank says to me, that's not true. Frank uh, didn't hear back from Balthazar after Frank provided them with a quote for the property. So why... If, if there's not an ethical violation here, is it just sloppy and dishonest? And why are we letting him get away with it? And why are we subjecting all our families to this when there's multiple other options, including the bank and other ones that have been suggested here tonight? We don't want trucks parking here, even if that was the only thing that we agreed to. We don't want any of it. Please. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else who hasn't spoken yet? I'll just uh, highlight the correspondence that we've received um, thus far regarding this application. Uh, from Brian Thompson, July 21st, he's at 35 Deerfield. Uh, concern about light and noise pollution, and on August 17th, photographs showing that Baltazar has moved in. Uh, from Sharon Cuts on July 21st, 15 Deerfield, uh, neighbors deserve quiet, families working from home, property owner has a history of past violations. Susan Arcata, July 21st at 41 Deerfield, concerns about truck engines, truck beeping, truck loadings, middle of the night, is there an alternative site? Cindy Hughes, July 22nd, property is blighted, traffic and noise concerns, photos were included with that one. Uh, David Santoro, July 31st, 187 Church Street, uh, commenting on night work, beepers, tailgates banging, moving equipment noises, property is an eyesore. Uh, Carol Swanke, August 2nd, 75 Center Street, uh, proximity to homes, constant noise, and that she's working from home. Amy Majewski, August 3rd, 110 Center Street, uh, noise, safety, and ethical concerns. Sue Tenario, who spoke earlier, August 4th, issues regarding public safety, public health. Please find an alternative site. Uh, Christina Carpino, August 4th, quality of life issue, noise and light pollution. Quinn Urich, uh, August 4th, 20 Hillcrest. Property is unsuitable, negative impact on other businesses and neighborhoods, and uh, provided photos. Michelle Furman, August 12th, photos of supplies being dropped at the site. Daisy Weaver, August 2nd, she's at 36 Woodland. Uh, this is the entrance to Old Weathersfield, and it backs up to many homes. Joe Canton, August 16th, 28 Deerfield, uh, commenting on no noise, lights, dust, quality of life. Uh, Jennifer Reagan Lefebvre, August 17th at 89 Garden Street. Uh, no benefit to the town or residents. It's a nuisance and safety hazard to children and resident walkers, people working and studying from home. Uh, Amy Bello, August 17th, 
safety issues with students walking in noise. Kristen Salters Pedno, August 15th at 15 Fairmont. Uh, health and safety, noise, lighting, working from home, uh, particle pollution and children's safety. Harry Brown, August 17th, illegal use of the property. And uh, Cynthia Greenblatt, August 18th, 35 Broad Street. Uh, disruption, dirt, noise, ugliness, danger to school children. And then uh, last one that came in this afternoon from Sharon Cutts um, regarding the issues that she discussed just now. So that's the correspondence that was provided to the commission members uh, subsequent to the package being assembled. Um, Rich, we did get one um, additional person who joined the meeting. Uh, who may want to speak. I'll just, uh, the last four digits uh, of the phone are 6029. So if you um, are interested in speaking, I'm going to ask you to unmute yourself and, and please go, go ahead. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Hi, this is Nicole Ferrari from 25 Belmont Street. I concur with all of the concerns <laughs> listed above um, that in addition, especially the walking, that's the route that every kid in Old Weathersfield uses to walk home from the middle school and high school, in addition to the ridiculous violation of the residential zoning and the intrusion of the noise and the lights and the dust, but particularly the kids walking, it's wildly unsuitable because of that. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, is there anyone else in the public that wishes to speak on this application? Anybody else on the commission have questions for the applicant? Um, Justin and Ian, do you have any yeah, final questions? Question? Okay, Jim. Yeah, so he's not going to be stockpiling uh, material to any major degree there? No, that's, uh, that's correct. There's not going to be any, any uh, no gravel stone process material. It's just uh, essentially fitting spikes and uh, equipment that um, if, you know, if it isn't stored behind, uh, I guess the auction house will be stored on the shoulder of the road or the tree belts. Okay. Can I speak? Okay. Is that permissible? Hello? Yes. Hello? And this yep. is Sharon Cut. I'm wondering if no one is asking Justin why he lied about not hearing back from Colton when they gave him a quote, and why are we continuing who want to pay Mr. Zabreski instead. Doesn't that strike anybody as ridiculously illegal and unethical? He lied to us all in writing and in person. He said he didn't hear back from them and he's got a quote. Why don't we want to pursue this line? Well, actually what I was moving to was providing Justin and Ian an opportunity to um, make any final comments, including addressing uh, issues that had been raised by the members of the public or members of the commission, and I'll provide them again with that opportunity. Thank you very much. Yeah, this is uh, Justin. You want to you want to you want to take that you want to take that one on uh, on the the quote that you received. Yeah, so I I'll say say it, I put it in writing and I'll say it again. I I did not receive a quote for a staging, so I'm not sure what Sharon's referring to there. Um, again, I, I called them, I spoke with someone on the phone and I was told I'd get someone to call me back and I, I did not receive a call back on that. Um, as far as why I didn't actively pursue it, uh, I've been doing this, you know, quite a few years and, and I know that if, if you don't get a call back in this industry, that means that people aren't interested. Um, a couple other points I'd like to bring up is just want to reiterate the work zone, the construction zone. The construction is from Silas Dean on Church Street, all the way down Church Street, through the railroad tracks, all the way to Garden Street. And again, on Knott Street from Silas Dean, all the way down to Hartford. So I hear a lot of, a lot of points, a lot of questions about safety, um, impacts from construction of the staging area. This staging area will have no impact on safety because the construction needs to take place regardless of the staging area. If we get permission to use the staging area, 
it's not going to change any of the construction that takes place on the street on church street um i think it's worth uh it's it's worth noting that if the staging area is is not approved as a use all we're doing is is pushing the issue to other communities in the town that will have zero benefit of the construction um, this project is for the residents on church street and the use of this staging area I disagree that it will benefit only Mr. Zabrowski. I say that it will benefit everybody affected by the construction because it'll increase and the construction should be able to happen quicker with the use of this staging area. Uh, if, if we're required to use another staging area further away, it's just gonna take more time, more impacts to other residents, traffic impacts in the community, um, potential safety in other areas that that are unnecessary um i think we're just trying to focus focus where the construction is 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 ultimately why we selected this location and why we submitted the application okay justin could you speak a little bit this is a um this, this both both knot street and church street are in very close proximity to an elementary and a middle school uh, as some of the neighbors did indicate, this is a heavily uh, 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 walked uh, series of streets to get those kids back and forth from home to school. Could you talk a little bit about what you guys are um, taking into consideration in terms of uh, watching out for kids, uh, particularly in the morning and the afternoons? Yep. As far as uh, sidewalk access, we'll always maintain access on the sidewalks. Uh, if we do need to close a sidewalk to install some of the water infrastructure, uh, we install sidewalk close signs at the at the closest crossing so we can direct them to the other side of the street. Uh, we'll never have both sides of the sidewalk closed at the same time, so we'll always provide pedestrian access uh, throughout the construction. Okay. And just one other thing, did you ever talk to Mr. Zubretsky about using um, the inside? Uh, of his building for storage to try and minimize some of the outside stuff? I did not have that conversation with him. I do not know the capabilities of the building on the inside. A lot of the materials that we deal with require heavy equipment to pick up. Uh, so the logistics of inside the building uh, may not suit it, suit it for this use. Okay. Rich, can I have, ask one more question of Justin? Sure. Uh, Justin, uh, would you be willing to install a temporary construction fence running parallel to the railroad tracks and have a, a screen, you know, a uh, mesh screening put on it so to uh, stop any headlights and stuff and that type of thing? Would that would you object to that if that was something we would, want, would like you to do if it's going forward? Uh, no, we wouldn't object to putting a uh, screening between. I just can't guarantee that that's going to stop. Uh, it'll help, but I can't guarantee that it's going to stop uh, the, all your concerns. Right. Okay. Thank you. I, 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 I disagree, uh, Justin. Uh, we keep talking about headlights. What we don't we don't keep our headlights on between eight and four. Uh, during the day, so I'm not sure where headlights are going to become an issue. And I, I mean, and, and the screen, I mean, it's not like we're going to have dust or, um, you know, anything really. Uh, I, I, I'm just not sure what the barrier would do. What time of year are you going to do the night work? Uh, right now, the night work's anticipated to be going on in September. Right, and there really wouldn't be any truck traffic in that in that church street church street yard during during the night work. You know, we would bring our materials out there prior to start, um, and our equipment would be essentially staying in the intersection throughout the night. All trucks, uh, you know, taking excavated material would be going to Hartford and bringing back uh, materials from Hartford. So really, besides uh, you know essentially starting the equipment and bring it to the intersection, there wouldn't be any traffic coming in and out of, uh, of that, that uh, lay down yard at night. 
Okay. Is there uh, anything else from anybody on the commission or the applicant before we close the hearing? Okay. If not, is there a motion to close the hearing? So moved. That was second. Great. Motion by George, second by Jim. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the hearing is closed. Um, discussion, does someone want to make a motion to precipitate discussion or uh, talk about what you think? I mean, in my mind, like if I'll just chime in with, um, I think the taking taking all of like the, the stockpile materials, like any of the granular materials, taking that off of um, the site turns it into just like a more, more appropriately called like a lay down area. So it's, it's less of an active sort of construction site, not, not as much of the, not as much of the noise as we were talking about uh, a month ago. Um, I think, I think that effort significantly reduced the impacts to the neighboring community. I realize that there are still some significant impacts. Um, I don't know that there are a lot of the impacts that have been discussed, like the, the safety for the kids um, or pedestrians, the, um, the sound sensitivity. Like I, I understand the concerns, but if if the if the improvements are going to be made they're going to be made and it's only going to be done in conventional manners and i don't i don't see a method that totally gets rid of any of those concerns so um you know i i, I feel for the neighborhood i work from home i've had construction uh just had a a uh, day long meeting where somebody was doing construction and doing a um it was Connecticut natural gas they were reconstructing a line going across and there was like an idling dump truck like all day so i get it um this is a bit more long term obviously than a single single lateral going across so i feel for them but i just don't know of an alternative that would totally assuage any of the issues that are being brought up by the neighborhood um if this stockpiled area was moved to a different location, you're still going to deal with the truck traffic and the idling trucks, um, possibly just not in uh, in the area of the auction house, so not not as close to the home. So I get that too. Um, I don't know. I think I'm just I'm just struggling with the moving of a laydown area and then just pushing the inconvenience to another part of town and how to deal with that. Like, it's like, we're, we're kind of stuck in the middle here. Are you making a motion? Uh, no, I'm just having the discussion. I'm just, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to like, you're making a case one way. I'm, I'm making a case for, um, yeah, I, I agree with you and thank approving, you. approving because I don't see an alternative. Okay. Ryan, to follow up with you, just, I, I had talked about different, I thought about different areas, Weathersfield Construction Yard on Wells Road at Maine, uh, the Price Right lot, and uh, the Farmington Bank site, there's not, it's, it doesn't really seem conducive, that that site, for what they're going to stockpile there, and my, just from my little bit of exposure. But if they're over at Weathersfield Construction, they're going to go down Main Street, come all the way across Garden Street to get yeah. to Church and not. So that increases just the impact of now all of Old Weathersfield. You're right, Jim. And then if we go to uh, if we go over to Price Right, they're going to be coming down Jordan Lane across Harford Avenue, and you know going that way. So I don't see it minimizing anything, helping anything. Yeah, I'm just talking out loud. You're cooking. <laughs> that one. You burn dinner.
Mr. Chairman. Yes, Tony. Can I, can I make the motion anyway on it? To just yeah, I'd, I'd appreciate idea. that. I'll make a motion to approve uh, application 2044-20 uh, for the special permit in accordance with 5.24 uh, for the Wethersfield regulations for temporary construction staging area at 207 Church Street um, uh, without, I can't think of anything else to add to it, just to get the, just to get the topic, uh, at least in a motion, on the table. Okay, thank you. Someone want to second that for discussion? Second. George. Yeah. I can, I'd like to add some conditions and when you get to it. No, now's a good time. Okay. You want to do that now? Uh, do, do we want to uh, put up a construction screen? I know that was brought up and the applicant uh, said that it wouldn't really help and there might not be any really night trucks in there or night issues. Uh, George, I was going to suggest that uh, after having looked back at my notes that we discussed a month ago, um, I think I think uh, Justin came in tonight a little more prepared, and and I want to thank Ian for joining in anyway. I think we needed that extra those extra comments. Uh, I'll pro I'm going to be voting against it probably because I did go to the site, go through the site, looked at the sidelines and the streets, and I think once the leaves come down. It's really going to be exposed. The construction site alone that I had when the uh, Creck School was built, that went on for two years. It was day and night. It was loud. It was obnoxious. The construction sites alone are difficult. And as uh, one of our commissions was saying that it's a... Oh, a construction screen, uh, Tony, you oh, want to... We can add that to the, to the uh, discussion. We probably add a, many more to it. But the okay. reality is uh, they were well prepared. I think a little more prepared now. But tonight, I just don't think this site, okay. well, it's close to the railroad tracks. And even with the site plan, if I had a little more detail, maybe with a, a 40, 400 scale type of, a site plan showing exactly what was gonna be stored where, when, and how long, you know, I might've been a little more convinced, but after listening to a month ago and even now, whatever amendments you, you add to the motion, uh, I just don't think it's a good site for it. But go ahead, George, you can add <laughs> whatever Yeah, you one more, uh, I'd like to require a, uh, guard at school um, opening and closing times at uh, the front of that site. Or someone, not a guide, but uh, someone to um, make sure there is, there is no problem with school children. How do you want to word that, Peter? What do you think? How do you phrase it? Uh, there, is a, there is a crossing guard at Silas Dean and Church Street. Um, I don't. I meant right down in front of the site. Yeah, I, I was just trying to think if there's another guard at um, Church and Garden. I don't think so. There's one farther up Church uh, at the entrance to the elementary school. Um, I suppose you could attach that condition. I don't know how that would work in terms of paying for it. And it you know, could be, it could be one of their own employees. That's all. I don't care who it is, but no. sure. George, are you worried about the vehicle, vehicle? The area from with the between the trucks and any pedestrians during the school opening and closing times? When George, you mean so when vehicles are leaving the site, correct? Right, correct. Okay. Because is there any safety issue? This is to Justin. Is there any safety issue with the pipes being stored in a non-fenced area to the public? The uh, hearing's closed. Okay. Right. They could uh, install traffic control devices at their place, you know, i.e. stop signs, et cetera, in, inside the parking lot, you know, and uh, warning signs, you know, for the people. I'm sure it's part of their safety protocol. But Jim, I'm open to, on my suggestion to any kind of means to control uh, the pedestrians and the trucks. I would think... Uh, George, I think to your point, I think school at minimum. Kids, actually, and, but no, really. School times only. Right. Okay. So, yeah. so, George, to your point, and it's a, a valid point, while we at minimum require them to install on their side for the trucks coming out of the site, uh, stop signs and, you know, pedestrian crossing signs, just to keep reminding the drivers as they come out, you know, of what's going on there. 
Uh, not good enough, Jim, in my mind. Because they are going to be working on the shoulder of the road. You know, they're going to be working within the sidewalk all the way around church. Not everything. You know, the whole neighborhood's going to be impacted. I'm just, I'm just talking out loud, George. I thought the uh, pipe was going up pretty much the middle of the street. Sort of, I don't know. On the but they may side. stage it on the side of the road. What's that? They, they probably are going to stage it on the side of the road. Yeah, and you mean staging. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. George, did, do you have any other stipulations I don't or pensions so. that you... Oh, I was looking here, but I don't know that one is. Hey, hey Rich, uh, David Drake, don't we want to add the basic one that no aggregate to Tony's... This is David Drake. Yeah. Yeah, he didn't add that. I mean, said that the, I mean, that was a, to me, that's the big modification. What What was it? The, no aggregate. I mean, that's the aggregate. truth. That's the biggest modification. Yeah, no no storage of earth materials. Yeah, I mean, that's, to me, that changes a lot, right? Yep. Yeah, you can put that in as, a, I'd accept that as an amendment. George, you okay with that? Yeah, I, what, yeah, yeah. I, I have one more, I don't know, it's a multiple thing, sort of. And it came from the beginning of all this. Uh, cleaning up the roadway in and out. The, uh, they said they're gonna do all this, but I'd rather put it in condition. Uh, on the west side, the cleaning up the chairs, uh, fixing the potholes, and then the site should be, may, uh, should be brought back to normal or something like that, some phrasing. Um, when they're complete. Clean, cleaning up the site, too. I mean, it, there's... Well, they have to sweep the site, George. On no. the uh, east side, stuff growing up the side of the building. Clean it up a little bit. Clean up the roadway and vegetation around the building is what I got here. Get the chairs out of there. I think those are gone, maybe. I went through today. I didn't remember seeing them. Okay. The uh, town engineer wanted, in in the in the extent that it was necessary, there was some erosion and sediment control measures that he wanted to be attached, just in case. I think they may go away because of the aggregate material, but I would I would leave that to the discretion of the town engineer. All right. Yeah, there's the, the sediment erosion control and then the um, uh, comment like uh, from Sue for, for airborne contaminants, trying to make sure that dust is controlled. I think we discussed that uh, in, the, in the meeting a month ago where they were going to use, whether it was water or calcium chloride, whatever. Um, but just I would want to reiterate that we're going to, uh, that we would want them to, to control dust and control like any debris from getting off site as uh, as much as possible. Okay. Anybody else have any conditions or stipulations that they'd like to propose and discuss? I think one thing that um, probably is worth including in there is that the uh, the hours of operation are as presented during the testimony tonight, since those were slightly at variance with what was in the writing in terms of the number of hours and um, and the uh, the length of the the anticipated night work. You want specific times? Or no, just, just what he had said. I mean, he, he provided 10 hour windows and said that they were only working eight hours a day, that the night work was anticipated to take two weeks and that there would be no day work during the time there was night work. You know, those kinds of things that, you know, were not in the, the written application, but were presented to us tonight. I believe he said 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Right. 
Right. But he had said that it would be eight hours a day, even though that's a 10 hour window. All right. Does anybody have anything else? Uh, I, have, I have six conditions then. Okay. Do you want to read them back just so that everybody knows? Sure. Number one pertains to the screen screening fence uh, for headlights. Uh, number two pertains to um, traffic control, crossing guard, um, stop signs, pedestrian crossing signs. I would probably add that, and I, I think they've already done this. They've conferred with the uh, traffic officer at the Weathersfield PD. So maybe something to that effect that they work out those details with the um, police department, the appropriate staff person there. Uh, so number three is the no stone or aggregate to be stored on site. Number four uh, is regarding the cleaning up of the site um, uh, and any post-construction repairs to the site. Number five pertains to the erosion and sediment control town engineer, as well as maintaining sweeping and dust control. And then number six pertains to the hours of operation as testified. Okay. Stone aggregate and uh, excavated material, if you want to throw that in there too. Okay. Tony, were those acceptable to you? Yep. And George, you're the second. Were those acceptable to you? Yes. Okay. Yeah, and just personally, uh, I'm kind of with Tony on this one. I uh, don't think it's an appropriate site. I don't think it fits under the regulations. Uh, I understand that moving the problem just moves the problem, but there are more appropriate locations where this can be done. Um, yeah, it's just my thoughts on it. All right, any other discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. 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 All right. We're going to so need a we should probably do a roll call. Yeah. Yeah. Better do a roll call, yeah. Okay. Uh, Ryan, you read the names? Bet. So, Commissioner Roberts is no. no. Commissioner Allard is a yes. Commissioner Hughes is a yes. Yay. Commissioner Oikel? Yes. Commissioner Hammer? Is, yeah. He's recused. Oh, that's right. Uh, Commissioner Dean is recused. Commissioner Edwards? No. Commissioner Homiki? No. We've got three no's, three yeses. Do it. Am I missing one? Dave? No. Sorry David about that. Drake. Sorry about that. Yep. All right. So the motion. Fails four to three. All right. Thank you very much. Um, given that Mr. Radican has been patiently enduring this application, uh, entertain a motion to take item 3.2 out of order ahead of 3.1. I'll make that motion, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. Commissioner Dean, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Uh, aye. Opposed? Okay. Uh, 3.2, public hearing application 2049-20Z, Thomas Radican seeking a special permit in accordance with section 36C of the Weathersfield zoning regulations to install a storage shed larger, larger than permitted at 34 Ridgewood Circle. Uh, if you wanna introduce yourself and tell us what you have in mind, please. Yes, um, we are uh, replacing a, an old shed. It's over 40 years old. Um, actually went over on, and um, the new shed we were putting up is from um, a company called Tough Shed. And it's 16 there. Than the, uh, than the old shed. It's 16 by 24. And um, we want to put it in the same location back. 
which is just a very large yard. Um, but uh, had to pull a per, uh, special permit for it. <laughs> so uh, hopefully we can go ahead with this if it's all right with the town. <laughs> Is the um, is the shed going to be off the MDC right of way? Yes, it is. Served the uh, property survey yet, and originally told that we were in their easement of twenty feet, but he um, told us that it's eighteen foot easement and it's seven and a half feet on either side of the of the uh, pipe, which is uh, only seven and a half feet on our side and uh, five side easement. Mr. Vatican, can you do me a favor? Can you try uh, turning off your video and potentially your audio will come in a little bit clearer? Yeah, you're kind oh. of stuttery. So if you if you click in your box and hit the little ellipses there, stop uh, you the should video. be able to, yeah, hit stop video. that better? Yes. Yes. Okay. Not that we don't want to look at you. It's just we would like to hear you. <laughs> <laughs> so basically the, the shed is off the MDC easement and it's going in essentially the same location as the prior shed, um, but it's just slightly bigger. How, how high is it? Uh, we have the um, 15 feet six. I think that's correct. It's hard I, to read, but um, I don't have in front of me. I believe uh, that sounds about right. Okay. It was, it was, uh, I knew it was higher than the town allowed. And I, I have well, I find it right now. I got a mess of paperwork. Don't have that measurement. Okay. Uh, Is it on the same footprint in the first place as you've got out there now with gravel? It's in the same foot, um, but it's um, on one side. He keeps cutting out. Yeah, yeah it's in now, the same general location, just slightly larger, I think is. Correct. And not going into the right of way, MDC right away. Right? No, it's going the other way. Okay, good. I, I, I've been down there, I saw the site, I walked it today. Uh, I'm satisfied that uh, it's a big site. This is a relatively newer part of town. Uh, and uh, the sites are bigger. And uh, there's uh, supposedly electric right away behind it on Wells Road. I've been going by it for 50 years, but you know, I, I don't see it down in there, but it's there. And uh, you know, I'm sure of that. But the, the point is his, his neighbors are not impacted by this. Uh, even, even the neighbor to his left side, on the other side of the right, MDC right away, um, really has a tree that I think is big enough almost to shroud this. So uh, it's, it's, not, it's not going to imp impact his neighbors or the neighborhood, in my opinion. I think it's fine that it's bigger than maybe the old one was. Yes, that, that um, the gravel that you saw, um, it's actually, um, one side eight feet more than the building actually is and then I left a two foot two foot of stone all the way around the building so that's actually a much larger pad that you looked at oh, than yeah. the building okay. itself it actually was a very big pad yeah a grand yeah <laughs> so it's smaller by two feet all around okay uh, two feet by all around except for one side it's actually eight feet shorter um, I left for, our, for the tractor to be worked on without and, working and, in the grass. Right, and this sits way down from the end of the cul-de-sac 
you're at the end of the cul-de-sac, this sits much further down. It doesn't impede your neighbors. Your neighbor off to the, on the other street has got trees up behind him and that kind of thing. So it's really uh, no impact on the neighborhood as I could see it. Unless people have a complaint and uh, they haven't seen fit to testify so far. All right, I sent the letter out on the 4th of August, so. Then, and this is just going to be a regular storage shed for yard equipment and so forth. You're not going to be running a business or living there or anything like that? No, no, just just for storage. Okay. Going to have any utilities in there, like electric? Um, right now, I'm not sure exactly what my parents have planned. They may, they may run... Um, if they do run anything out there, um, they'll, they'll probably run an underground wire. Yep. Um, nothing overhead, but um, I'm sure they're going to want some type of light out there. The other, the other shed did not have it, but I'm not, I'm not sure. We didn't discuss any electrical work. It's just right now, just a shed. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'd be more concerned if you were talking about putting in plumbing or something like that. So. Oh, absolutely not. No. Okay. Anybody else on the commission have any questions? Uh, if not, are there any members of the public who wish to speak on this application? Anybody wishing to speak? All right. If not, any final questions? All right. Is there a need to close? Yes, please. A motion to close hearing. Okay. Second. Second. All right. Second by Jim. Motion by George. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Um, someone want to make a motion on the application itself? Motion to approve, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Is there a second? Second. All right. Motion by George. Second by Ryan. Any uh, discussion, conditions, stipulations? All right. If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? All right. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you for your patience. Item 3.1, public hearing application 204720Z. Town of Weathersfield seeking a zoning regulation amendment in accordance with section 101F of the Weathersfield zoning regulations for proposed limb, low impact design, LID regulations, various sections, and revisions to Appendix A site plan requirements, Appendix B plot plan requirements, and Appendix E as built plan requirements. Uh, Peter, are you or Derek going to present the application? I'll uh, start and I'll have Derek uh, jump in um, uh, as appropriate. Um, Derek, uh, town engineer uh, Derek Greger and I have been working closely on um, proposed uh, updates to our regulations. Primarily this comes from uh, a permit, uh, the MS4 permit that we received from the Connecticut DEEP uh, that requires uh, us specifically and, and many other municipalities to uh, revise land use regulations uh, to um, have developers and our applicants consider uh, applying low impact development uh, standards to their uh, projects. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mandate it in all cases, uh, but on a case by case basis, they want uh, communities such as ours uh, to uh, require and discuss with developers the inclusion of, of those kinds of provisions. Pr primarily those provisions apply to how they manage uh, on-site and off-site stormwater uh, so that uh, water quality considerations are made, uh, infiltration requirements are considered, and, and those kinds of things. Additionally, uh, and as part of uh, these proposed changes, we've been talking about updating our site plan uh, regulations for several years. So we figured we would piggyback on these um, regulations and incorporate changes to our plot plan, our as-built and our site plan standards. So I apologize, but the changes are pretty uh, voluminous. 
uh, and if you were having trouble sleeping, uh, this, this would probably, probably have been a good uh, remedy for you for that. Um, so um, I can, I'll quickly summarize without going into uh, all of the minutia uh, for your benefit, I think. Um, so uh, there are 12 different uh, provisions that we've sort of categorized that we're proposing to change. Uh, the first pertains to uh, applying some new definitions in our definition section that apply to these types of regulations. Uh, the next two sections deal with uh, re revisions to our landscape regulations. Uh, the, the new language will include um, things like bioretention areas, filter strips, uh, and other low impact developments practices. Uh, we're also, uh, we've also added language that uh, basically right now under your present regulations, parking lots must have curbing. Uh, part of the uh, application of these kinds of techniques. In some cases, curbing would be eliminated so the stormwater can get into uh, grass areas, swales, uh, basins, those kinds of things. So we've made some changes to the, uh, we're still requiring um, curbing uh, where it's appropriate, but we're also allowing some flexibility so that it doesn't have to be there. But at all. aren't you recommending on occasions when applications come in that we eliminate the curbing? I mean, I thought you'd yeah. been doing that right along. I think you need curbing in most projects, but in certain areas of projects, you can do without it in order to get these low impact development standards in place. So it's a combination of both. Uh, the next one, two, three, four, four sections pertain to the parking regulations, because obviously our parking regulations have a lot to do with how stormwater is managed. So we're making uh, some changes there uh, to encourage um, you know, a, a minimal Minim minimization of pavement where we can do that. Um, we're providing some incentives uh, for parking reduction if you use low impact development. So rather um, than using a stick, uh, there's a little bit of a carrot in the regulation. So if you're considering low impact, we might be able to give you a reduction uh, in the amount of required parking. Um, we're also putting language in there that pervious materials are also encouraged uh, in the parking standards. And then there's a, a section that's simply a clarification. Well, that wait a minute. Instead, instead of paved, instead of uh, asphalt paving, you would suggest impervious blocks and stuff like West Side. Actually, there's also um, asphalt paving that is more uh, porous Porous. that allows the rain to get into it. Uh, use of brick pavers. There's a, there's a whole host of different types of technologies now uh, that could potentially. Um, there's also you know, grass parking that's reinforced. There's, there's right. all sorts of things. And you would obviously review those on a case by case. Haven't by case. we been getting some of that in already in our largest newest projects? I thought we've been, we had. We've been doing this and trying to do this where we can, but right now we have no regulatory uh, provisions. Basis that, for it. So, yeah, so, so it's not this. really adding to what we're already almost requiring in many ways. No, it's really just codifying it in your, in your regulations. Right, so, okay. Uh, we've also added uh, an entirely new stormwater management section. We don't have that now uh, that provides guidance on uh, what kind of calculations we need, those kinds of standards that we have not had before. So we've added a new section 6.13. And then- this does, Hold it, Peter. This doesn't apply to residential zones, does it? No, Just this commercial. Commercial and multifamily. Yeah, okay, thank you. Um, some towns have gone as far as to apply it to uh, residential properties, but um, the administration of that, as you can imagine, uh, is, is a bit of a bit of a nightmare. Uh, towns are actually who have done it. Uh, for example, Newington uh, is now taking those things out of their regulations because they were just um, very difficult to manage. Very difficult, Peter. I walk the town a lot these days, but I'm still chairing a, a sidewalk and walking committee we don't have right now. But uh, when I do walk the town, I see everybody's residential, a lot of them, little old pipes coming out to the curb, things like that. It'd be hard to enforce in the residential areas. The older town, we're all developed. It could be difficult. Yeah, we're, we're already understaffed both in the planning department and in the engineering department to, to not have to take on that additional uh, responsibility. Yeah. So You wouldn't want to do that. It'd be awful. And then to, to summarize, the, the last three provisions are we are um, uh, updating our site plan requirements, um, and which includes language that encourages low impact development. 
We're uh, updating our plot plan requirements. Those are primarily for residential properties. And then lastly, uh, we're adopting some new uh, as-built standards that we really don't have right now so that after a project is built, they have to provide us with uh, details as to what was built, where it is, uh, so that we have documentation uh, of that. Um, so those are the 12 provisions uh, in the regulations uh, in, in summary that we are proposing. Uh, as I said at the beginning, we, um, we are uh, required to do this through the DEEP. Uh, we have already been doing this to a certain extent. This just puts the authority uh, in your regulations. Uh, and the bottom line is we will try and apply these new provisions uh, uh, as appropriate. It's not a mandate, uh, so there is flexibility. Um, it's really encouraging this type of thing. So it doesn't necessarily box us in to having to do this in every single project. However, it, it does get uh, that conversation uh, into the planning and zoning process where it really legally is not now. Peter, uh, costs aren't going to go up that dramatically for applicants of property, major properties, uh, any more than you have been recently, because you've been applying a lot of these already. You know, I, I, I don't think the cost increase would be significant. In some cases, it may be less, because if they have less pavement, uh, asphalt is incredibly expensive. So mm -hmm. if we're trying to encourage uh, you know, the reduction of that, um, if we start applying some of the more innovative stuff, certainly that could, uh, but it's, you know, a lot of it are basins and landscaping and, you know, s sort of things that people do anyway. And as I said earlier, uh, we have been doing this already. So I don't see this as a dramatic uh, increase in, you know, the practices that we already have uh, in place. I think almost every project that we've, that's gone through the permit process recently has included some level uh, of uh, LID, um, and you and you don't even. I think it's become part of the part of the practice, common common practice. Yeah. So therefore, you you don't need to go out to say developer uh, types like Miller's operation and ask them if this adds to the workload or the cost of developing properties because you're already doing it. And and most You've been of doing it right along. And most of them are proposing it anyway as part of their plan. And we because they do it everywhere and other towns are doing yeah. this too. Like, to be honest, we're uh, quite far behind most other towns uh, okay. by by many, many years. So this is um, kind of long overdue. We've been able to um, I, I, w I wouldn't say avoid it, but um, it's about time that we put this in our, our regulations and uh, uh, documented it for points going forward. Plus the fact that we're documenting it establishes the standards because right now we're just telling people to do certain things. It's not in our regulations and that's that's also not fair uh, oh, yeah. to applicants. So um, uh, I'll, maybe I'll let Derek um, jump in if if I've missed something, um, you know, that's uh, uh, worth uh, worth pointing out. Thanks, Peter. Hello, everyone. Hi. Hi. Um, so yeah, just to follow up on what Peter was saying, um, we've we've been requiring it. I think this will make it um, clearer to the applicants when they are going to be coming in with a new application as to what we're going to be looking for, rather than it being part of the discussion of the review process. Um, gives that that information up front. That's part of the reason with the updates to the site plan, plot plan, and as built requirements. Um, these are things that we are always currently looking for on these types of plans. It just gives them that information up front. So hopefully we can eliminate or let's say eliminate, I want to reduce the back and forth during the review process. Also, I think it, you know, it benefits the, the applicants or the developers and their engineers to know up front, this is what the town's going to need for pricing when they're evaluating what they're going to need to do in scoping out their projects. At least it's all there and available. Um, the new additions to the regulations um, Peter mentioned their DEP requirement as part of our MS4 permit. Um, you may remember the town has they're under DE permit, DEP permits now as other municipalities are to um, address stormwater uh, quality and control. And this is one of the things that is required of all towns is to have something uh, in the regulations that gives us some teeth with regard to it. It is still um, not a mandate 
it's not a mandatory requirement. It's just something, as Peter said, to have in the discussion and try and move our developments um, in this direction. You may have noticed on uh, plans that have been coming through, we've been asking them to track, you know, impervious areas, how much is on the site before they build, how much will be on the site after. That's something we, we've been tabulating now for the last couple of years with the goal of trying to reduce the overall impervious area throughout the town, um, throughout the duration of the permit. So this will help us um, in, in that uh, requirement that we're needing to meet. Um, the only other thing I wanted to mention is we are making similar changes to the uh, inland wetlands regulations. That commission uh, will be meeting this week and reviewing some of the changes. Uh, we have been coordinating the text and the language between the two regulations to be sure they're consistent. Um, where it's necessary, it meets exactly what is in our DEP permit, so it's clear. And uh, we're just trying to make the changes to all the regulations that will cover it. I think we had talked um, at some point, we need to look at our subdivision regulations that haven't been um, updated in a while. Some of this information uh, should go into that as well. But initially, at least, we wanted to get it into the zoning and wetland regulations uh, at first, because those are the ones with the applications we should most. Thank you. Does anybody else have any comments or questions on these? I'd be happy uh, to. Just to, uh, I do, if I might. Okay, Tom. Uh, uh, I noticed that in the as-built uh, uh, regulation requirements, I, 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 there, it may be in there, but I didn't see it, and that's the format for for the as-built. And uh, is there? And I didn't see any language about uh, whether or not a as-built can be submitted in a digital form as opposed to a paper, which has implications for both storage and and also uh, perhaps long-term durability of, of what's filed with the uh, with the town. Probably this is maybe more appropriate for Derek. Yeah, that's something we had discussed um, under as bill. I, I have to look back, I don't recall exactly. Um, we have been, I, I know it is in the site plan application that we do request that they also provide it to us electronically because we are going to be moving to storing our data um, in that form. Generally with the applicants on both during the application process and during review of as bills after the project, um, we've been pretty flexible with them to submit in electronic format. Sometimes that's easier for them and easier for us and just expedites the process. Um, so we are working towards that, but that's something uh, we could take a look at for the as bill to make sure that um, we have that listed in there similar to the other. Um, requirements. Yeah, the reason why I mention it for the as built in particular, that's that's the final uh, submission would be the as built and that's the, you know, the permanent record for the project. And uh, it just seems that that's a more efficient way of, of, of storing it and having it uh, stored efficiently and, and effectively and permanently for both the developer and, and the town's uh, interests. I, I think looking at page 27 of our submission um, for as built, uh, we do have a, a statement in there about um, being submitted in electronic format. This is a digital copy of the final approved as built record drawing. That is an identical copy of the drawing in the form of a PDF with a dig digital signature on the plan. Um, pursuant to the state regulations. So yeah, we are looking for that as well. And um, you know, I think that'll benefit us going forward as far as being able to uh, maintain our files. Okay, I just didn't see, I didn't see any reference to digital, so I stand on, corrected. Uh, it's D, on D3 on page 27. 27, yep. No, I didn't make it to page 27. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at page 27. I, I don't see it, but uh, I'll take your word for it that it's there. It has a, it has a new digital signature, too. Yep, it's on there. Yep. Eric, I think one of the first times this came to us was the former period. Oh, okay, I see it. Yeah. Former period and furniture site. Uh, would I be able to assume that? From now on, once this is approved, that we're going to have a lot more detail on some of the site plans for the commercial 
properties and it's going to give a lot more work for you to do or do you have the support staff to to uh, to get to that much detail or is it assumed that the private sector will be coming in and knowing this is aware bringing all these details to your attention um, this is information we currently are requiring anyway um, i think it's better just to have it up front and they know what we're looking for um, from experience I think we're going to find a lot of engineers are going to submit and they're still going to be lacking information we're going to need. Um, but at least we'll move the ball a little further in that respect. And hopefully, like I said, try and cut down some of the back and forth. So as far as the amount of information, it's going to be very consistent with what we have been seeing with the addition of when they can incorporate LID into their developments, you know, we'll be looking for them to do that when they can. Um, but other than that, I think the, uh, the information we're going to be reviewing is going to be very similar. Thanks. I think it might be less in that you use that example because we had no regulations at that time. So we were in a back and forth um, with that particular developer trying to encourage him to do it without having the regulations in place to point to it and say, here are the provisions you have to consider. So it might be the opposite. We might not have had the back and forth uh, that we had in that case. Yeah, I mean, it manages expectations better. Yes. All right. Does anyone else have any thoughts or comments on these? I'll admit that I, I haven't had a chance to look at them as much as I would like, but if everyone else wants to move it along, I'm not going to stand in the way. Is there anyone in the public that would like to comment on these applicate on these proposed regulations? Okay, guess not. All right, does everyone feel comfortable moving forward or what do we want to do? I'm fine moving forward with one of the questions, Derek, on page five, it says applicability, unless exempted is provided below, it's the second paragraph on page five, but there's nothing exempted down below. Was that just a typo or something that could have been pulled out, Peter? Let me take a quick, so you're on page five, applicability, is that the second page? Letter B, yep. number one, unless exempted is provided below, but I didn't see anything that was exempted. Yeah, the exemptions are in C2. Okay, got it. <laughs> there is no C2. There's a little bit of a void there, isn't there? Yeah. There's a gap, yeah. yes. There's a one, it goes for one, three, four, so we need to obviously tweak that a little bit. Like going up an elevator in a, in a hotel. Huh? There's always one floor missing. No third thing. All right. But Nobody has any. I just, just to clarify that, where it says, unless exempted is provided below section B. Uh, has a thing that the agent determines that the activity, I think that's probably what was being referred to, but um, I'll, I'll leave that to you to, yep. to discuss. It's a minor issue. Yep. Okay. All right. If nobody has anything else, do we want to uh, close the public hearing? To make a motion. All right. Jim made the motion. Is there a second? Second from George. Second. George, second. Uh, any discussion? If not, is there a motion? You know, approve. Yeah, keep in, keep in mind we want to set an effective date too, uh, which oh. probably should be do you do somewhere around motion? September 4th or somewhere. Yeah. Just want to give time for it to be published in September 4th. All right, so Ryan, did you make the motion to approve? Yes, it's with uh, September 4th. Somebody. Okay. Ryan made the motion. George, did you second it? Second it. I said it twice now. Okay, well, just, <laughs> just I want to give you a chance to back out. <laughs> I know. Is there any uh, any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 
opposed? Motion carries. All right. Thanks very much for your hard work on these. Yep. We've, we've spent way too much time on these. We're, we're, we're happy to have them moved along. Yeah. Now, having yeah. done having done a few hey, MS4 submittals, <laughs> like I, I feel your pain. Yeah. Yeah, we're <laughs> from the government. We're here to help you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next item 4.1, a discussion regarding self-storage facility regulations. Um, and I, I think the, the star for patients tonight goes to uh, Mr. Mark Trahan, who's joining me um, from the Economic Development and Redevelopment Agency. And it's uh, curtains for him. Yes. <laughs> um, uh, Peter told me to be here at 7 p.m. sharp. <laughs> I'm very happy about that. That's yeah, something we've got for paying attention to him. Yeah, the room fills up fast. Good to see you, <laughs> I'd like to give Peter credit for using the word voluminous uh, early on. I thought that was well done as well. Um, I'm, I know most of you. I'm Mark Trahan, chairman of the EDIC and the RDA. Um, just real quickly, the, uh, the RDA and the EDIC reviewed the existing zoning regulations as it related to storage facilities and we had some concerns about the town's remaining potential properties that could be utilized for that type of enterprise. And we sought a moratorium uh, to give us time to develop a thoughtful approach uh, to those, uh, to the to future regulations. In accordance, Peter um, has done a great job, uh, had went on a, has gone on a road trip. Uh, we um, visited other existing storage facilities around the state uh, and provide us with documentations on these facilities. Um, which incorporated residential mixed use and, and retail and were extremely well designed. Uh, we reviewed other towns regulations um, and the recommended regula uh, regulations from the EDIC RDA takes into account what we believe would make any potential storage facilities uh, projects far more appealing aesthetically as well as potentially generating uh, more tax revenue. Uh, and with that I'll turn it over to Peter or if you have any other questions. I know Peter has sent out a copy of the proposed self-storage regulations that hopefully all of you guys have received. So thank you, Mark. Um, and on a related note, at your next meeting, um, if you recall, we had a uh, basically a one-year moratorium on the submission of new applications for self-storage <laughs> facilities. Um, considering we're still working on these regulations, um, there is a request to extend the moratorium for another uh, three months. That will be, I, I won't get into the details of that, but that will be on your next agenda for discussion before the moratorium expires. So I just wanted to, uh, while we're on this subject, just make you aware of that. So that's September 1st. Um, as, as Mark indicated, uh, we spent um, some considerable amounts of time researching uh, uh, what's going on with the self-service, uh, self-storage industry in Connecticut, uh, what communities are doing uh, with their regulations, um, and uh, what the trend uh, is, not just in Connecticut, but in other uh, states. So some of this language uh, reflects uh, language from, from other uh, communities uh, outside of Connecticut. Um, uh, and the EDIC uh, itself uh, met several times uh, to go through all of these issues so they fully understand it before they were making recommendations um, to you guys. Uh, so these are just the draft uh, regulations and we're more than happy to uh, go, go back to the table, do some more research or whatever direction we might get uh, from you folks before we submit a uh, final uh, regulation amendment application. The, the bottom line is the commission looked at various scenarios and they've come to the conclusion that um, we should uh, keep the use in the zoning regulations. However, uh, much more thoroughly regulate the use uh, going forward. Um, so these regulations uh, basically reflect the position that um, keep, keep the use in your uh, present uh, regulations and keep it in the uh, exact same zones that it's in now, but add uh, uh, additional language so that if uh, a development does come in, uh, we've spelled out clearly what um, we want to see happen. Um, part of the research that we did is we went to several uh, uh, recently developed self-storage uh, sites in Connecticut, 
Um, and what we found is um, many of them are now being developed as mixed use developments. Some have a mixture of self storage and residential, some have uh, retail. Um, so uh, we found that um, uh, a good philosophy uh, to build on in terms of these regulations. So uh, very, very briefly, and I, I know you do have uh, copies um, of the uh, proposal. It's basically uh, two pages of uh, regulations that we would recommend uh, that you consider. Uh, the first provision would be to add some new definitions. Right now, we don't define what self-storage is, so we would add uh, some new language um, which defines self-storage, but also defines mixed use. Um, we have some mixed use regulations now, and we don't have a definition uh, for, for that either, so this will help in that regard as well. Um, as I said earlier, uh, the second provision is we would continue to permit the uses uh, as special permit uh, uses requiring a public hearing uh, in, in, in the RC and the BP zone, which is presently how we do it today. Um, the third provision are, are probably the most important provisions. There is a series of uh, probably 15 to 20 different new standards. Um, the philosophy would be that um, the, these self-storage projects would have to be at least three stories in height. We would no longer allow the one-story garage style uh, self-storage facilities that we have in town. Well, we have in some cases in town, uh, we would mandate that they be at least three stories in height. Um, we would mandate that they also be mixed use. So they would have self-storage, but they would also have some other component um, of that. We did find that the multi-story um, self-storage facilities here in town generate a surprising amount of tax base. Not that that's the uh, bottom line, but I think it's um, something to just be aware of that they, um, they do generate uh, a surprising amount of taxes. Um, and, and no school kids, right? Yes, no, no school kids, not much park not parking, right. very little parking. Um, so there are a whole, I won't get into all of the provisions if you have questions, but we've got some all sorts of new standards on, on design requirements. Um, certain amount of uh, percentage of the facade has to be a window um, so that it has the look and feel uh, of something other than a self storage facility. Um, so there's uh, all sorts of provisions in here that deal with aesthetics that we don't have now. Obviously, the design review committee would have to uh, be integrally in, involved in uh, the review of these. We've also got some separating distance requirements. Uh, we've added a 1.5 uh, uh, radius, 1.5 mile radius from similar facilities so that uh, there won't be a proliferation of these in any, any uh, one, uh, one area of town. Um, on the Silestine Highway, for example, uh, which is about three miles in length, uh, we've got one uh, basically uh, on the north end and then nothing uh, elsewhere. Um, the Berlin Turnpike may be problematic for future uh, siting of uh, self-storage, but uh, that is something the EDIC uh, felt pretty strongly about having a separation distance. So, um, I think one of the things too, Peter, if you could share with the commission the pictures of some of the facilities that you took so they have an idea on what we were looking at, I think it's quite eye-opening. And a lot of the stuff they were doing from an aesthetics perspective very similar to some of the stuff you guys were discussing this evening was um, that um, the fencing and walls and landscaping around um, is, is something that we're very, very focused on because a lot of potential sites or the handful of potential sites for facilities like this are surrounded by residential neighbors, uh, neighborhoods. Uh, and we wanna be very mindful on the, um, and I know the design review would do a good job, but we wanted to add as much uh, teeth up front to the regulations as we could uh, to make sure that the residents in and around these areas would be happy uh, with these, or as happy as they can be, if you will, with projects like this. Yeah, and, and I, I, when we did uh, look at the various sites, we did take a whole bunch of photographs. So we will have those for you uh, at the time we present the uh, regulations. So you know uh, specifically what we're talking about. And then lastly- When do you, when do you want questions, Peter? Anytime, jump right in. Oh, oh, yeah, sure. Uh, pretty much. Well, I, 
why do you have to have mixed use? Why couldn't you not have DUs, for example, uh, uh, with a storage facility? There's a philosophy that because these aren't um, high activity generators, they create dead spots in your commercial districts. So uh, they're low parking need. Uh, they don't have a lot of uh, activity at a lot of times. So in, in a lot of cases, they create these dead spots in your commercial environment. So we wanted to uh, maybe compete with that um, and require additional activity. It also intensifies the development uh, from an economic development point of view. Uh, as I said earlier, that's not the primary uh, purpose of these regulations, but- Yeah, uh, but that's part of the requirements in the state statutes that we provide for economic development. True, but, but it's not the sole- Yeah, yeah sure. sure. Right. No, but I, I mean, I was wondering why you insisted on it, but uh, you mean there's no exception, but you're gonna have, you're gonna have preliminary discussions. You're gonna require a preliminary proposal pre-application discussions with both you and the commission, right? Right. Uh, now, here's a, here's a strange thing for somebody like me who worked 20 years in the state housing department. Uh, but why do you say the dwelling units should be, uh, have to be part of a proposal? It, it does, the, the mixed use does not have to be uh, like, storage. One aspect. It could be retail. It could be other things. It just has to be something in addition to self-storage. It's not limited to, to residential as the other. Uh, to get rid of the dead zone aspect and all of that. Is that part of it too? And that, economic improvement, it enhances it? Primarily. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But you're saying it has to in there, I think you said. But It has to have some use in addition to self-storage. It doesn't have to be residential. It could be commercial or office or oh, okay. retail okay. or something other than just self-storage on its own. Okay, yep. then why three or more stories? Because well, that seems to give the quality and the uh, value to it if you have it bigger. That's part of it. I, the, the Economic Development Commission is keenly aware of our limited development opportunities. Uh, to have a one-story garage style spread out over lots of acreage does not maximize the development potential of these sites. So they felt they, they'd rather have a more intensive development. And quite frankly, they look a lot better. Uh, they, look, they can look like office buildings. They can look like multifamily. Uh, it, it has some uh, more gravitas, let's just say, than those single story garage style that you've traditionally, you know, these are not your, uh, you know, your, your, your grandfather's self storage f facilities these days. They've evolved. You're, you're trying, this is part of the good quality of development you want. Yes. Correct. And the high economic value to it. And yes, to support what to I want to see and hear too. So what you're saying, three or more, yeah. But I just wondering why that arbitrary level. But and and then the last my last question was corner lots. Why you no know corner lots? I, I guess the safety issue. But I, I you may no, have other reasons. Go those on. you know those corner lots tend to be your you know your hundred percent intersections, high profile. Um, you would probably prefer to have something, you know. Um, In other words, you don't I, want Lemoore's to be taken down and something put up there like this, right? Uh, typically, don't, don't answer that. You're only going to get in trouble. I'm just <laughs> I, w I wouldn't speak specifically to Lemoore, so I would jet my would be more generic. <laughs> you better not. <laughs> okay, I think to support uh, Pete's position, too, George, um, the images that he'll send you that the industry itself has realized that building up versus building out is better value for the developer as well, it's better use of space, and a lot of the designs that you'll see. Um, are multi-storied. Um, uh, the industry has come a long way from a design perspective. Good, I agree. And then particularly here in Wethersfield, the land is getting more limited. Yes, yes. It, Peter, um, you, in here you say other uses. Do you want to give examples to kind of guide people with what kind of uses we want? And when I read that, I said other uses and I sat in my head, what would I put with a storage facility? And I'm just saying, do you want to put some examples of that you saw that you feel would be appropriate? 
Sure, we can do that. Because it's kind of like, this is very wide open and as, as a designer, I could come up with many things to put next to storage facilities. Yeah, I think as a, as a, as a commission, the Economic Development Commission def definitely had some strong feelings about that. So we can certainly yeah. uh, memorialize that in a, in a regulation. Yep. Okay. So we, we just wanted to give you a, a sneak peek uh, of uh, something that may be coming uh, down the down the horizon down the down the road uh, in the next uh, month or two before we uh, finalized it. So if you have uh, further uh, comments or questions and you want to uh, reach out to me offline, I'd be happy to happy to do that too. Or if you want to mark up your copy and send it my way, uh, I'd be happy to also uh, do that. And then, uh, as Mark indicated. Uh, the commission did a whole bunch of research, so we will provide you with all the background, uh, all the photos, all the examples of things that are happening out there, so you get a better sense graphically, um, you know, what we're talking about, rather than just in a in a regulation. I think some of the some of the photos that Mark was mentioning will uh, really clarify what we're trying to uh, accomplish with this with this regulation. Good job on this, guys. And uh, just one final question came up while you, we were talking before. But why the one and a half mile limit? And I wrote that down. We, we talked about a bunch of different uh, distances. Um, when you lay it out uh, on a map, we did that just to see what areas were going to be impacted. Um, and it provides some some room. It, it, uh, you don't want them too close together, in other words. Yeah, you don't want them clustered. We don't have an industrial park, which these sometimes would traditionally be found in. Most of them now are are being built on commercial corridors like the Berlin Turnpike and like the Silas Dean Highway in other communities. So we didn't want to preclude, you know, the opportunity for this. There is there is one or two there are one or two sites uh, that we know people are kind of interested in, and we wanted to, you know not necessarily exclude those. So that one and a half mile uh, numbers worked for a couple of different reasons. But it is a big, it is a big number. It's a big distance. So, so we could talk about that further, but that seemed to make some sense. And I can provide you with some information so you can get an idea of what areas it would still be allowed to happen in. Yeah, that, that'll be helpful when we get to that point. You know, kind of do a radius around existing ones. I have I have that already. So, okay, good. All right, that was just for discussion. Does anybody yeah. else have anything we want to uh, talk about on that before we move on? All right, thank you, gentlemen. Uh, next item: minutes, July twenty-first. Thank you for your time, guys. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. Yes, thank you guys. Very good job. All right, minutes of July 21st. The only comment I had was that uh, as much as we like Chairman Harley, he wasn't there to note that there were only five members present. <laughs> I think he was there for a, like a minute or two yeah. at the beginning. Until he found out that he didn't need to be there. He, he bowed out before it started. Like shoes were on fire to <laughs> get out of jail free card. Yeah. Okay. All right. Someone want to make a motion to approve the minutes? Make a motion to approve, Mr. Chairman. And I'll okay. second. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Motion by George, second by Tony. Any discussion? Not all in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Opposed? Abstentions? Abstain. Dave abstains? Abstain. Jim abstains. All right. Um, next, we can do our organizational meeting if people are up for that. <laughs> election of officers, nomination and election of a chairman. I nominate Rich Roberts. I second. All right. Are there any other nominations? 
No, Mr. Chairman. All right. If not, is there a motion to close the nominations? A motion Second. to close the nominations. Second. Any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 All right. Um, thank you. Nomination and election of vice chairman. It's pronounced Ryan Allard. Is there a motion? <laughs> motion so I I'll second the motion, Mr. Chairman. Okay, Joe made the motion. Tony seconded it. Uh, Are there any other nominations? Make a motion to close. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Congratulations. Yes. Congratulations, Will. Next item, nomination and election of clerk Joe Hammer. Yeah, are there any other nominations? <laughs> Second. <laughs> this is going well. <laughs> Okay. Uh, it's George, seconded. It's already uh, seconded. And second, are there any other nominations? Motion to close. Motion by Jim. Second by George. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, authorization of Peter Gillespie to sign notices of the commission. Is there a motion? Motion made. Okay, George. Second. Second by Jim. Any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, authorization of Derek Greger to sign notices of the commission. So moved. So moved. Okay, moved by George. Second by Joe. Any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, appointment of Gary Evans, town manager, as ex officio member. So moved. All right. Second. Motion by George, second by Ryan. Um, I think he has to be here at all of our meetings, though. Yes, the condition. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Uh, Nomination of election and an alternate to the Regional Planning Commission of CROG. Do we have any idea who's doing that now? The, the reports have been riveting. I think that's Jim Hughes. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it was Tom Harley and oh. then Jim Hughes, yeah. All right. Does anyone want to do this? Ryan Allard be great. What? I already, I did that already. I was uh, I think I knocked it out of the park. You're, you're the guy. You've already warmed up. I think I knocked it out of the park. That's the way Ryan avoided. Don't go into that place. I want to give somebody else a chance. I did it both officially at the state level and and from commission. You can th you can throw me in there. That's fine. Okay, um, Jim, are you willing to stay on as an alternate? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. How many meetings have you been to, Jim? Oh, I, I'm zooming all over, George. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The um, the motion would be to nominate Ryan as the representative and uh, Jim as the alternate to the Regional Planning Commission of Krog. Is there a motion? Motion so made. Second. Okay. Motion by George, second by Tony. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Good. Uh, liaison to Economic Development and Improvement Commission. <laughs> Jim doing this too? You guys are funny. Jim, if it's any, if it's any consolation, the, the meetings are at lunchtime, and oftentimes there's lunch provided. Not anymore. Or often. You know, virtual lunch. Yes. Virtual lunch, yeah. BYO. I don't know. Does anybody want to uh, volunteer for this position? 
about Mike Vieira? This is for what again, economic development? Yes. EDIC, yeah. Uh, yeah, I might like to do that. All right, that's all we needed to hear. Uh, someone else. Uh, wants it. <laughs> <laughs> is there a motion? Not here. Quickly. I move, George. Second. Okay. Any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 And readoption of the rules and procedures. I guess last year when we were talking about this, I had <laughs> said that I had some comments and I was going to get to Peter on them, and I never did. So that was last year, you said. Yeah, that was last year. Okay. Uh, we had it was pre-COVID. We could always um, approve them and then put it on a future agenda and vote on it during the regular year. Yeah, that's probably fine. Yeah. Um, is there a motion to approve the? Rules and procedures. All moved. Okay, motion by George. Second. Second by Ryan. Any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay, thanks. Uh, staff reports. Um, as you can see, we got a couple of applications coming up at the next meeting. So that should, I think we'll have three hearings uh, at your next uh, meeting. Um, we, uh, if you've been by the uh, Puritan site, they're starting to make some progress there. Just so you know, they found all sorts of surprises under the ground. Um, they believe that the brook that runs through there actually at one point ran through the middle of the site and the site was um, dramatically filled in. So they're uh, a little bit slowed uh, on the progress of that project because of that. Um, the um, are they filming the, the Curse of Oak Island on that property now? Or? <laughs> yeah, you're finding all sorts of stuff. So, um, What's the big mound down there? That's the processed, um, it's fill material. They processed a lot of the um, concrete and it's other the building. material. <laughs> so, oh. yeah. Yeah, yeah the pavement, the building, the, the slabs. Yep. yep. Yep, they churned it all up and are going to use it for... Uh, uh, raising the grade of the site structural. How's, Ch how, how's the chase site coming? I don't see them tearing that yeah. down. They've had, a, they've had an excavator there for several weeks. They're still, believe it or not, waiting for the DOT uh, permit. DOT so, permit? Yeah, well, it's a, it's, a, Silas Dean? it's a major traffic generator because it's commonly owned, all those properties, and they're modifying oh. it. But believe it or not, they're still waiting for the DOT, I think they've been holding off on the demolition until they're assured that they have that in hand. Um, so, um, so, so those are probably the highlights. Um, there's a couple of, um, you may have seen the, um, up on the Berlin Turnpike, the Pet Supply Plus building. If you remember, Tough Shed was mm -hmm. gonna go in there. Uh, the property was purchased by a new owner and they were able to bring Tough Shed uh, back again um, so Tough Shed is actually going in. So they'll be in to seek your approval if they want to still do the outdoor storage. So that building is being renovated uh, as, as we speak. Um, Thanks, Peter. I wondered what was going in, you know, after the big fire yesterday over there. Yep. Yeah, that was quite a, quite a shocker yesterday. Uh, yeah. So those are some of the highlights. I answer any questions if you have, if you have them. We're, we are talking... Uh, 1199 Silestine Highway is up for sale. So we've had several conversations with some interested developers. Uh, so nothing to specifically report, um, but um, there's some potential uh, there for that building. And then obviously we've, we've, we have been talking to several people about 1000 Silestine Highway again, but that's uh, pretty much par, par for the course. I think we're gonna focus on trying to get the owner there to demolish the building finally and you know, get a, a site that's easy. Yeah, P Peter, I never get comments from people in town about things and sites. I keep asking about, of course, the uh, phone up in Jordan Lane, they, but they keep the property up even though it's, you know, not used any longer. You know, the, uh, the nursing, nursing home. home. But the 1,000 is brought up to me once in a while and nothing else ever. But that, people aren't concerned with that. 
Yeah, we've had some pretty serious meetings recently with a couple of people, but um, you know, we that's happened so often um, that I think uh, we've come to the realization the building should be demolished, and uh, that's I think that's going to be our next. We we do have some money that we can assist with that, uh, the, the Economic Development Commission. Uh, so I think that's maybe our next conversation to see how seriously we can push that along. I think that's a good move, clearing the site should help. Yeah, I mean, that, that had been an impediment, at least psychologically, to a lot of people in the past. Yeah, I think if the building was gone and people saw the size, you know, that's a three acre, three and a half acre site, yeah. um, uh, you know, I think you'd see some action relatively quickly. So. And the Borden uh, project is, um, uh, they've, uh, I think they've been very happy with the leasing uh, of all of the uh, apartments. Uh, they're, they're making some progress also on the commercial leasing on the ground level. Um, they haven't uh, announced um, uh, who the restaurant's gonna be yet, but I think they, uh, they have somebody and uh, an announcement might be made shortly on that. Hey, Peter, have you uh, resolved the issue down with the Charles restaurant and the parking down there? I, I've, there I've got a complaint or two. I won't tell you where it came from, but. You know, it's, it's still a, a, a work in progress. Um, he has come a long way um, from, from when he first opened. Obviously, it doesn't help that the parking lot is uh, unavailable because of the tent. Yeah, right. But, um, he has, um, you know, more and more people uh, are getting the message about parking in the Keeney. Um, I think his repeat customers now. He's got a lot of signs out there, I know. Yep. Uh, he's, he's, he's been trying to work with the neighbors and the neighbors have been trying to work with him. So we're also looking at some other, other options. We're gonna be having a meeting with the police and the uh, physical services to talk about some other options. Um, so uh, I haven't received uh, at least myself personally, the, the, the complaints that I did at the beginning. So it leads me to believe that things have kind of reached uh, at least a level of equilibrium. Obviously when his parking lot is available, that will, but, but how, who knows how long, you know, that's going to continue. So um, um, I, I think it's beginning to get uh, worked out when he kicks up to the next phase, when the occupancy can go higher. I think that's when we're going to have to have a conversation about uh, some more substantial things happening there. Peter, now that First Church has repaved their whole parking area, which I'm glad they did, and it looks nice, uh, is the town going to have any discussions with them about using the parking in a public sense like we did last spring? We've you know, met um, with the First Church uh, leadership a couple of times. We've actually uh, submitted to them a proposal that we're waiting for a response on uh, about having a potential shared use of that uh, to support some of the businesses down there. So uh, that is a, a work in progress and we are actively uh, working. We're also talking to Trinity Church as well. Um, so we're taking a, a little bit broader approach than we've had in the past. Good, good. Cool. Thank you. All right. Uh, any public comments? I don't see any public. Anything else for the good of the order before we adjourn? Uh, if not, is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn, Mr. Chairman. Okay. I'll second. second. Tom seconds it. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. Thank Have you. a good evening. Happy uh, Labor Day for everyone. Yes. Uh, we meet before then. Happy Labor Day. We meet before that or after that? Yeah. Where no, are you going? Yeah. First is before. Yeah, we meet the first.